The sun always shone on the mountains of Fibble. The wind and the rains never came. To call the place beautiful, no one would quibble, though hard on the feet, they'd exclaim. But high in those hills, past the rocks and the rubble, so high that the clouds were below, sat two tiny towns that were nothing but trouble. As you listen, you'll see that it's so. Now the town to the west that thought it was best bore the name Flibberoloo, where the women and men since 1710 have worn on their heads one large shoe. Now in town number two, one big shoe wouldn't do. So the people of Jibberty Lot would look down and bellow at shoe-headed fellows and place on their own heads a pot. Mine's really more of a kettle. For days without end, these two neighbors would bicker as to whose headgear was best, and the shoes and the pots would fly ever thicker from morning to night without rest. But not all of the people who lived in these cities were angry and bitter and vile. A few would write poems and sing happy ditties la, 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 and la, la. greet all their friends with a smile. One Flibian fellow who hated to fight tried hard not to act like a mobster. While pots crashed around him from morning till night, he'd just play with his pet wind-up lobster. They kept to themselves and they'd talk and they'd talk until one day he said, Hey, let's go for a walk. I'm tired of lying around like a squid. I want to go out there. So that's what he did. The shoe-headed boy and his blue plastic friend walked out of their town and began to descend to the dark, rocky valley between the two cities, away from his friends and their light-hearted ditties. Ba-la-la, ba-la-la. Hey, this is swell, he said. Gosh, this is fun. It's great that my lobster can get out and run. But neither the toy nor the boy with the shoe could see the disaster about to ensue. For up in the rocks, hidden just out of sight, were six beady eyes filled with anger and spite. Six beady eyes watched our hero meander, two shifty crooks and their ruthless commander. Oh, look what good fortune, the nasty one said. Here comes a poor fool with a shoe on his head. I bet he's got money. I bet he's got gold or maybe some jewelry he'd like us to hold. Whatever the booty, I think I could stand it. Why, that's what I live for. That's why I'm a bandit. And then they attacked him from under their rock. First they knocked off his <laughs> shoe, then they knocked off his sock. <laughs> but the thing they did next was extremely unfunny. Why, they shook him so hard that he dropped his milk money. Hey! He protested. I don't like your ilk. How will I go strong if I don't drink my milk? But they didn't care. They'd accomplished their goal. So they put our friend down, stuck his head in a hole, and walked off with his money, every last nickel. Then yelled back as they left. See you around, sorry pickle. Um, I'm a cucumber. Then he said with a moan, Well, I guess I'm alone. But this was a loneliness he'd never known. His friends were far off and his lobster was missing. The sound he could hear was just the wind hissing. Hello? Hello? Things looked pretty grim for our Flibian buddy. His head in a hole, his shoe bent and muddy. But then, were those footsteps? Oh, could it be true? Along came the mayor of Flibberoloo. Of anyone, surely he'd help the poor soul. Hello, said the boy with his head in a hole. I seem to have fallen. I seem to be stuck. But now that you're here, well, I guess I'm in luck. Oh, dear, said the mayor, observing the shoe. A fellow in need, and he's Flibbian, too. <laughs> Young man, I have noticed your dire situation, and please rest assured that I share your frustration. But uh, how can I put this? Uh, what can I say? Ah, maybe you understand better this way. Is that music? I'm busy, busy, dreadfully busy. You've no idea what I have to do. Busy, busy, shockingly busy, much, much too busy for you. Oh, I see. As soon as the mayor had finished his song, a Flibian doctor came strolling along. Out of my way! She said, starting to slide. If you and your pickle would please step aside, I'm very important I can't stand and chat. Well, that's not my pickle. I found him like that. Besides, it so happens I'm noteworthy too. Why, I am the mayor of Flibberoloo. Um, um, I'm a cucumber. 
I see, said the doctor. Then you'll understand without an appointment I can't lend a hand. They're folks with bronchitis, they're kids with a flu, she said to the mayor of Flibberoloo. If I'm not mistaken, you're quite busy too. Well, they talked about schedules, compared daily planners, till finally a voice said, Please pardon my manners. I don't mean to bug you. I see that you're busy, but being inverted has made me quite dizzy. The two other Flibbians paused for a while. They looked at each other, then said with a smile, We're busy, busy, busy dreadfully busy. busy. You've no, no idea what we have to do. Busy, busy, shockingly busy. Much, much too busy for you. Cause we're busy, busy, frightfully busy. More than a bumblebee, more than an ant. Busy, busy, horribly busy. We'd love to help, but we can't. Ha-ha! Oh, it was just dreadful. How could they desert their Flibian friend with his head in the dirt? That's it, then. I'm finished. I'll die here down under. If they would not help me, then who would? He wondered. But wait, someone else on the road overhead. Would they help a friend beaten up, left for dead? Oh, look, on his head, not a shoe but a pot. Why, this little guy was from Gibberty Lot. Would he help a Flibian? Certainly not. The boy with the pot saw our friend with the shoe. Oh, look, he exclaimed. He's from Flibberoo. Why, they think we're garbage. They pelt us with shoes. Why should I care if he's beaten and bruised? But out here in the wild, his chances are slim. If I was in need, would I want help from him? He looked at our friend, and he looked at the shoe. And then in his heart, he knew what to do. He may be Flibian, that's plain to see. But God made him special, just like he made me. So we got him unstuck, and he picked up his shoe. And together, they walked back to Flibberoloo out of the valley and back into town where he stayed by his side till the doctor was found. Oh, my! Said the doctor. He's wearing a pot. The little one there is from Gibberty Lot. <coughs> you saved this fellow? You pulled him through it? I don't understand. Tell me, why did you do it? He has a shoe and I have a pot. But when we look deeper, there's more that we've got. So the boy with the pot gave the doctor some money to pay for the cucumber's bill. And the mayor cried out with his eyes moist and runny. I'm touched by his act of goodwill. If this little guy can take care of his brother, when he lives in one town and he in the other, why can't we all try to help one another? And love would surround our fair hill. Now, if you visit the mountains of Fibble, you won't see a shoe or a pot. Instead, they throw flowers and candy to nibble. I bet that you'd like it a lot. Mm -hmm.